Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. I'm about to head to the comic shop on New Comic Book Day, so I'm doing a little double video. It's going to be Amazing Spider-Man and Venom. I got my little soda pop here. I got another 128 copies of Iron Sights sent off to backers. I should have all of the domestic graphic novel only backers done by Saturday and then uh, on track to have them all shipped by the end of the month. Actually for both um, for this one and for the uh, uh, the the one that was for charity. But anyway, so this is Amazing Spider-Man number 7, government name, issue number 808. And uh, it was really good. It was great. It was the best Nick Spencer. He's uh, he's He started with this reboot. Um, there were elements I liked. Almost every <coughs> issue had some elements I liked. Um, uh there is a, this huge passive aggressive thing where they brought back Mary Jane and yet she's barely even in the book and then I had an epiphany I said uh so they spent like a year really really emphasizing the uh cl close friendship of uh, Johnny Storm and Peter Parker over in the Spectacular Spider-Man and then this reboot is all built around I think this guy's name's Fred Myers uh Boomerang him and Spidey becoming friends, actually real friends. And uh, I was just wondering, I said, like, are best friends the new girlfriend? Um, back in the day, you know, every book, it was about the guy and the girl, the Robin Hood and the Marian. Marianne. Wait, Maid Marian, yeah. And I, and I always make this analogy. It's like you're throwing a ball at a wall and it bounces back. Like, if I say Peter Parker, you say Mary Jane Watson. You know what I mean? Like, if I say Matt Murdock, you say Electra. It just, you know, every every hero had his great love, even if, you know, Cyclops, Jean Grey. Um, but that kind of slowly disappeared over a while to which most of the heterosexual relationships were dead or, uh, you know, they were broken up or they were just hooking up, like... There was no actually like love stories. It was just ha ha ha. Tony Stark slept with She-Hulk, and now he's sleeping with Chitara or whatever her name is. Um, but uh, the other thing I noticed is like just kind of in life, um, uh, having a girlfriend, you know, uh, is not as big of a deal. It used to be like the biggest deal ever. It's like, oh my god, it's, it's single. He doesn't have a girlfriend. It's like. People don't really care. I have friends who go years without being in relationships. It seems like relationships are kind of uh, uh, over. My my buddy always says, uh, "Dating is for poor people." <laughs> um, uh, but uh, so they ended up in the bar with no name, and then in a really stupid Disney Channel bit, um, Peter Parker was doing Spider Man trivia and he was winning. Anyway, I forget why, but. Kingpin said to kill uh, Boomerang. And uh, then we start off, and you think it's going to be silly bill of humor, but the the narration's good. First of all, like he wasted the first five issues with having like something having to do with hunting. I, I, I don't remember what the payoff was. That. He always, the, the first couple pages would always be some characters you never saw like somewhere else. But this one, it says... I've been in some jams. I've been hunted as a fugitive. I've been buried alive. I've been cloned a bunch of times, actually. I've been trapped on an island of giant spiders caught in the middle of a gang war and pounded by the juggernaut. Hey-o. Um, but this uh, particular jam, this has to be the most infuriating mess I've ever found myself in. All right. Okay, so we established it probably isn't the biggest adventure. It probably isn't the biggest danger he's been in, but it's the most infuriating and absolutely fits. So we flash back. Um, Boomerang's been pardoned because he helped fight Hydra. He is now roommates with Peter Parker. I forget how that happened exactly. And then uh, he's doing the dialogue, and I actually, I don't think I laughed out loud, uh, but I was amused. Um, uh, they, they, Nick Spencer has an okay sense of humor. I thought he was really funny in, I think it's called The Fix. This, uh, this like, crime. It's That one also is, like, Crime Bros. Uh, that's actually a way better title, Crime Bros. That's what that freaking Mark Millar, Sean Gordon Murphy thing should have been called. It should have been called Time Bros. Um, so uh, Peter says, 
We criminals have a code, he said. There's no place safer than a bar full of supervillains, he said. And then Boomerang says, I can't believe it either. Our institutions are crumbling. Our cultural fabric is tearing, even when that fabric is spandex. Not the funniest joke, but it was fine. It was amusing. I was entertained. Um, so uh, then they, uh, they start fighting, and then he knocks out... I don't know who this guy is. And he's got a gun. He throws it to Parker... And uh, a little bit of silly and video game humor. Uh, but then we get this cool thing. It's like bros getting into a bar fight. You got Boomerang with his Boomerangs. And then uh, Peter Parker's got, I don't know who this guy's gun. And uh, he's, they make sure that he set it to stun, but who cares? It's cool. He's got a gun. Um, so then we cut to uh, uh, Kingpin. He ordered it and... Uh, so basically that guy says, isn't the whole shtick about the bar with no name is that, you know, nobody rats you out, but you, you paid people to rat, rat them out. And then he says this great thing. He goes, uh, in our heart of hearts, each of us longs to be whatever we are not. The rich dream of a simpler life. The famous yearn for obscurity. I'm going to keep reading. Those known for strength fantasize of weakness and those who cause chaos, they secretly admire order. Now... This is actually really brilliant. The typical thing to say is the weak man wants to be strong. The nobody wants to be famous. But he points out something that's just as true. That the rich want to be obscure. (laughs) That people who are perfectly fine have a weird need to be perceived as weak or victims. See, half of Twitter. Um... I know people who have money and they assiduously avoid ostentatious displays of wealth. Uh, they have like zero internet footprint. Um, like they're very much like I got something that can be taken. So I just kind of just want to be invisible. Um, but, uh, I thought this was really pretty deep, um, stuff. And then we cut back to the, the fights pretty entice, uh, fight. What? pretty ex- an exciting fight um it's just fun i just i had fun um you know, they did this little silly billy thing where everyone has to be a super villain so boomerang's like this is my friend the liar he can lie anything then they, he he like bluffs it's kind of dumb but whatever it's just one page then they escape and uh boomerang actually uh took a like a flame blast to protect peter so they're bros, and basically he says, "Hey, um, so what's your what's your deal? What's your stick? You're a super villain. What's what's the what's the twist? Like they say on uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Who's the mark? Am I the mark? Who's the mark?" Um, and he's like, uh, "I used to have friends, and then I bought robot versions of the friends, and then they went on the fritz, as my grandpa would have said, and then uh, I I just want friends, bro, bro, bro." And it's like, it seems very sincere. Um, so Peter's like. All right, this is where me and Randy hang out on Sundays. You can come if you want. And then uh, I got to... Sh- I don't want to spoil that much, but I'm just going to show this guy. Just... I don't know if this is this... Tell me if this is a new character because this scene was awesome. And I am not going to show it to you, not just because of a copyright strike, but because it's it's so good. Like, this is definitely a recommend. Okay, so this is a recommend. And then here is Venom. Oh, Venom is also number seven. Government name... Uh, issue number 172 and this one was ah. so i've noticed this thing with donny cates he writes a lot of stuff he, he shows a lot of care i really do feel he's doing that old writing for the trade thing like this is eddie brock chained at a table now it is pretty interesting but at 399 uh, i wanted i wanted something more so um uh oh spoilers He's being caught, he's been caught by, I was totally out of comics when this storyline happened. Reed Richards has a stupid helmet. He looks like some random Frank Quitely designed character from The Authority. But anyway, like, this whole thing is Eddie Brock chained to a desk and just talking and talking and talking. They're just talking. Probably the thing that I actually got, I got, weirdly got a lot of entertainment value out of this. Um, because Donny Cates... He cares. He thinks. Um, and you can, you can see it in, in everything he does. Like, it's weird. Like, I talk about this. The, the one thing you can't pay someone to do 
in life, it is impossible, is you can't pay someone to actually care. Um, uh, and when you get something, it's the most valuable thing in the world. So he actually cares about his stories. Um, uh, he's a little, uh, I don't know if I'd say arrogant, cocky. Yeah, cocky. Co- arrogant always sounds bad. Cocky can be good. Um, uh, but uh, he gets a little cocky sometimes. He's like, Bish, I know you're going to buy the next three issues. So I'm just going to have Eddie Brock chain to a table. You know you love it. And honestly, I was, I was entertained. I wasn't as entertained with Amazing Spider-Man, but I was. Um, but uh, so in the regular 616, Eddie and like all the other characters, all the other characters from this, you know, mainstream Marvel dimension, they talk in basically normal Joe Schmo uh, lettering font. But uh, Reed Richards, he taught, he has a, you know, uppercase, lowercase font. Man! I'm sure people are dialing out. This is really interesting to me. It's like, it's a type of stuff that Alan Moore used to do because he would just think so much. Um, uh, but he talks the way in the Ultimates they used to do this kind of uppercase and lowercase. I don't like. I, I like all caps. Um, but um, uh, yeah, it's basically catching your butt on a bunch of subplots and throwing out some uh, a couple surprises. But it is all Eddie Brock chained to a chair. Now. I, obviously, I get the comics subsidized by the channel. Um, and if I was just working at Papa John's and I just spent four dollars and the main character was chained to a chair the entire time, and other some other guy was monologuing, I'd be like, "Huh, hey, oh, I liked it, but I also don't like it at the same time." Anyway, so I'm about to head to the comic shop. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the Patreon and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content. And I'll have one new comic review up later tonight. Thanks. Bye.